Okay, so you want to know how these top CTOs are using AI to get a leg up on the competition? Well, buckle up, because we're diving into this women tech panel discussion with Fiona Tan from Wayfair, Michelle Grover at Slalom, and Sheila Jordan over at Honeywell. And get this, they all agree that it starts with the customer. Yeah, and what's so interesting is how they each approach customer experience. Like take Fiona Tan, for example. Yeah. At Wayfair, she's tackling this unique challenge of selling furniture online. Which, let's be real, it's not as easy as ordering a book from, you know, it's true. Blue Amazon. It's tough trying to put what you want in a sofa into words. It's like describing a dream. Totally. You just know it when you see it, you yeah, know? Exactly. And Fiona nailed it when she said, it's hard to describe what you want. But here's the cool part. Wayfair's using AI to solve that. Imagine typing in blue sofa, right? But instead of getting this generic list, you get options that actually match your style. What? Really? Yeah. And maybe even your budget, like based on past purchases. It's like having a personal AI design consultant. Okay, that's next level. But how does it even work? Is it reading our minds or something? Uh-huh. Not quite mind reading. Mm -hmm. But AI is getting crazy good at understanding what customers want, even if <laughs> even if they don't know the right words for it. Fiona was saying how search optimization has gone way beyond just basic keywords now. Oh, interesting. It's about intent. So you're searching blue sofa. AI might figure out you're actually looking for something modern, minimalist, you know, for oh. a small apartment. And then it like shows you exactly that, even if you didn't type those words in. It's like having a conversation with the search bar. Totally. And then there's AI-powered recommendations on top of that. Yeah. Say you are looking at that blue sofa. AI can look at your past purchases, what you've clicked on, even how long you've looked at certain things, and then recommend other furniture that fits your style. And it's not just about, like, how businesses are using AI to, you know, connect with us customers, they're using it behind the scenes, too. Oh, absolutely. To totally change the way they operate. It's like giving every department a superpower. Yeah. Michelle Grover from Slalom had this great example. She was talking about how they're using AI for these internal processes, right? And get this, they actually try it out on their own teams first. Oh, interesting. Before even giving it to clients. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're perfecting the recipe in-house before they, like, serve it up to their clients. Exactly. And she said one of the biggest areas is just automating all those like repetitive tasks Mix up. that everybody hates. Think about being a lawyer having to go through like pages and pages of contracts. Ugh, yeah. Summarizing everything. Or a developer stuck analyzing lines of code. For hours. Yeah. AI can just knock those tasks out like super fast. Huge time saver. Right. And what's interesting is how Michelle was talking about the effect on employees. When AI takes over those tasks, it frees them up to do more strategic work. More creative work. So it's a win-win. Like for everyone, uh -huh. it makes you wonder, what could you do if AI took over some of your more mundane tasks? Right. And this is like just the beginning. Another area where AI is making a difference is in knowledge management. Michelle and Sheila Jordan from Honeywell both talked about this. Just think about all the times that you're at work searching for, like information. Oh, constantly. Right. Company policies, project details, technical specs, like it never ends. Yeah. And it's always urgent when you need it. Of course. Yeah. And AI can make it so easy to find what you need right when you need it. It's like having your own personal like research assistant hmm. available 24-7. No more like digging through endless files or sending those emails like, does anyone know where to find? Right. I love that. It's a game changer. Huh. And then there's this whole world of like, Predictive analytics, that's where things get really cool. No, wait, tell me more. So companies are using it to, like, forecast their sales, find new opportunities, even kind of predict risks before they happen. So it's not just about working faster. It's about working smarter. Exactly. Sheila had this amazing example. Honeywell is using AI to predict shipping delays. Wow. With, like, crazy accuracy. They're looking at weather patterns, historical data, even port congestion in real time. So they can like see into the future almost. Yeah. And you know, before we move on to the whole ethics side of things, maybe we can switch gears and talk about how companies are actually, you know, putting these AI solutions into practice. Okay. So like we've talked about all these amazing things AI can do for customer experience, for internal operations, but where do you even start with implementing it? You know, it seems like a huge undertaking. Totally. It can definitely feel overwhelming. But one thing all three CTOs agreed on was the importance of starting small. Sheila Jordan from Honeywell had this great analogy. She talked about finding those big bets in AI. Oh, I like that. Don't sweat the small stuff, you know, those yeah. incremental improvements. Right. Find those areas where AI can make a real difference for your business. 
and then really go for it. So it's about like picking your battles, finding those high impact areas where AI can really shine. Exactly. And speaking of battles, they were all in agreement about one crucial thing for success. Yeah. Data quality. Of course. Yeah. Fionn Tan said it best. Feeding AI bad data is like teaching a chef with spoiled ingredients. Right. You can't expect a Michelin star meal. It's true. Garbage in, garbage out, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you need that good data to train effective AI models, obviously. And Fiona's actually talked about how AI itself can help improve data quality. How interesting. Yeah, it's like AI being a data detective, uncovering those inconsistencies, errors that you might not even know are there. So it's like AI is auditing itself in a way. Yeah, making sure it has the best information to work with. To make those Michelin star meals. Exactly, exactly. Now, of course, there's the question of, you know, what about the humans in all of this? And the staff, for sure. And all three CTOs were very clear. AI is about augmenting human capabilities, mm -hmm. not replacing us. Okay, good. It's about working together, collaborating. Michelle Grover, she really emphasized this. Upskilling and reskilling your workforce for this new AI-powered future. And it's not just tech skills either, by the way. Yeah, it makes sense. It's about critical thinking, problem solving. Straight All those human skills that are going to be even more important as AI becomes more powerful. Because we're the ones who have to, like, guide it and stuff. Right. We have to know how to use it effectively, ethically. So there's a lot of exciting opportunities on the horizon. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> we've only just scratched the surface of what AI can do. But what really struck me was what Michelle said at the very end. She said, AI is going to amplify our capabilities, both good and bad. Oh, wow. It's a tool, right? And like any tool, it can be used to create or to destroy. So the question for all of us is, how are we going to use this powerful technology? What will we choose to build with it? It's a big question and a lot to think about. So for anyone listening, if this all sounds a little intimidating, don't worry. You don't have to become an AI expert overnight. Yeah. But maybe start by asking yourself, what are some of those big bets in your own work or industry where AI could really make a difference? Because one thing's for sure, AI is here to stay and it's only going to become more important in the years to come.